and welcome to this episode of Behind the Wrestler. My guest at this time is none other than Aaron Angel. Um, thank you very much for taking the time out and giving us an inside look of your career. Very welcome. Um, the first question uh, you've probably been asked multiple times is who, when and where inspired you to become a professional wrestler? Um, well, I first realised that wrestling existed when I was about 14. Um, I've got a younger brother who suddenly liked watching the WWF wrestling at the time um, and he would put it on the telly and then I'd find he'd go to bed and I'd still be watching it and then I'd watch the late night shows and I just really fell in love with it so then um, I saw an advertisement for a local show and I went along and got speaking to the promoter and it was pretty quick from my discovery of wrestling existence to then wanting to become a wrestler and try it. Um, and you know, finding a school to pursue your um, dream, what was the um, challenges and the um, first day of training? Uh, well, back then there wasn't uh, sort of regular schools where you could go to uh, every week. Um, so I spoke to the promoter of the show that I said about. Um, his name was Scott Conway. He ran monthly training schools, so I did like three of those, but they were quite far apart. You know, once a month, and I, I couldn't really retain what I was learning, so then I got an opportunity to go away um, in the summer and with a team of wrestlers and sort of learn from them as they were doing little, like smaller shows, so that was really where I got my training, whereas nowadays there is a lot of training schools around, so that's really good that it's sort of evolved worldwide. Um, and then, you know, fast forwarding into making your, your debut, um, finding out that you're about to, you know, have your first um, singles match and making your professional wrestling debut, what was the thoughts and the process and how did you prepare for that? I think luckily I had youth on my side so being so young like you know you, you don't really sort of feel the fear I think going in now I'm a bit more like I take in the crowd size and sort of what they're thinking more I think back then I, I had no fear I just went out there and give it my best shot you know my best try like um, obviously the people that were training me they told me when I was ready to go in the ring, so my belief in them was to, you know, trust what they were saying and then, uh, you know, yeah, just give it a go. <laughs> so. um, and, you know, most of you, uh, you've been uh, trained by, you know, Doug Williams, Drew McDonald, Johnny Storm, <laughs> Phil Powers. Have you Googled that? I have. Yeah. I already have. But don't trust the internet. <laughs> and believe it or not, I got most of my training. Um, from, they were the first people that did those monthly training sessions. Right. So the very first month, I think it was Drew McDonald, and then it was the month after Doug Williams and Johnny Storm. So my very, my initial training sessions were them, but the people that I went away with um, and really learnt from was a, a variety of people. But I'd say my biggest influences were JC Ace, who you're going to interview soon, so he'll be on your demand channel to watch. Um, Klondike Kate was a massive influence in my career uh, and Sweet Soraya who has sort of travelled all over the world as well and mm. obviously them to be in the females they really gave me the direction of what to do as a woman in the industry mm. and uh, JC Ace taught me all the cool moves that uh, I was sort of known for back in the day and sort of the first one to be trying as a girl so yeah that was pretty cool. Um, you know you mentioned Sweet Soraya. Um, yeah and having it, uh, the opportunity to work with her and you know have multiple matches with her, what was the things that you learned um, from her and what was the things you took away from that experience? Oh, loads. Um, obviously she'd uh, been working uh, around 10, 15 years before I'd even started, so her influence and her knowledge of the industry and crowds and everything, um, psychology, a lot of psychology, um, she really knows how to work a crowd and we were really polar opposites so I was almost learning the opposite of what she was doing so everything she would do I would be the opposite of and those again the same with Colin like Kate, uh, her villainry and her presence I almost knew instinctively what I needed to be to be the opposite and to get the crowd you know behind me and wanting to see me you know, uh, win. Mm. So yeah, I think I learned loads of psychology from both of them. 
um, and you know, ca capturing one of the many championships that you've um, won, the um, RQW Women's Championship, and winning that for the first time. Um, what was the you know preparation and experience of getting a um, championship under your belt? Um, again, I was there when RQW was formed, so I saw the belts being made, and when they came in, it was uh, it was great to hold it. Um, I think it probably means a lot more now than it did when I won it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not trying to put myself down or say anything bad about the belt either. It's just the RQW belt when I won it didn't really have a meaning. I was it was more of a means to an end if somebody needed to hold it and somebody needed to hold it that was going to be on the shows. Mm -hmm. um, I have won the British Championship belt uh, with Bellatrix mm -hmm. uh, when I won that. Obviously anything to do with British wrestling is, is uh, just something that is, is you really want to win because being a British person that's quite a privilege to win um, and a lot of the um, more influential female wrestlers have gone on to sort of hold that belt as well mm. now so that's a, a really good one and I'm also the EWW Women's Champion um, and again that's uh, a sh they, they run in Hastings and down the south of England um, and any time that I'm close to home just feels great to to really know that they you know they've they, they back me and and so does the crowd and yeah to have that support and be a champion for them is great um and you know one of the um many matches that you've had with multiple people one of them was with um zane phoenix um and getting the opportunity to wrestle her um what was the things you took away from that match and what was the things that um stuck with you yeah, Zan Phoenix is a good upcoming wrestler. Um, I think, yeah, she's very feisty. I think she's got a lot of uh, charisma, really wants to make a, a mark in the world of wrestling. So, yeah, it was fun to work her. Um, some of the goals that you set for yourself to achieve... Um, what was the um, struggles and difficult things that you and the challenges you had to face um, by conquering those goals? I think self-confidence has always been a massive thing to me whether that's in wrestling or out of it um, so again if you're if you're wanting to step forward or step up in the world of wrestling and put yourself forward for trials and stuff like um, you have to back yourself and I think I, that doesn't really come naturally to me. Like I'm, I'm, I've had to force myself to, you know, put myself in the limelight. Um, I always feel like wrestling, where you have a character and you can, you don't hide behind your character, but you can be someone else. And I've always felt that so comfortable that um, any time it's, you know, just stepping out as myself and you know the paperwork side of things is always a bit of a, a worry. But yeah, I, again, I think wrestling has brought out. Um, my self-confidence so yeah um, and you know going from where you you started to where you are now and seeing the the transition and the evolution of professional wrestling what are your thoughts of um, when you started out to where it is now um, I think from what I've been told you know from history of wrestling um, and, and now like it, it definitely always goes up and down and in, in and right now, you know, we're, we're hitting this peak that I've not experienced before. Um, I think I came in on more of a lower part and it's, it's really risen, like popularity. People are talking about wrestling a lot more and a lot of the wrestlers are household names. Um, not just American wrestlers, like worldwide. Um, and the exposure because of things like internet and social media and, uh, yeah, people's ability to connect with each other on uh you know, a much quicker basis has just really made wrestling flourish. So yeah, that's it's great to see. Um, would you have any advice for anyone that's up and coming? And do you have any uh, dream opponents that you haven't faced yet that you would like to face? That's a tough one. Um, advice for people wanting to get into wrestling. Uh, definitely research where you're going to do your wrestling training, um, get in with a good crowd, 
watch as much wrestling as you can, wherever you can pick it up, wherever you can go and see shows, go see them. It's always different being at an event to watching it, uh, you know, through your, your telly or on the laptop. So yeah, when you can get to live events, do that. Um, be humble when you do meet wrestlers, uh, ask for advice. Um, don't be afraid to step forward and, and ask. Like People really want to help new people into the industry. So yeah, don't be afraid to you know, try and get yourself known and yeah. Um, and what was the other question? Uh, is there any opponent that you would like to face that you haven't oh, faced before? Team opponents. I guess um, when, I, when I came into the industry, some of those opponents are, are not really readily available to wrestle anymore. My dream opponents when I started would have been Trish Stratus and Lita. Mm -hmm. Definitely my top two wrestlers, uh, female-wise. Um, oh. I've been privileged enough to wrestle a lot of wrestlers that I've wanted to. And maybe again would be like Tony Storm, um, Emi Sakura. I'd love to sort of, just new people, I love wrestling people that haven't wrestled because I've, again I've been around quite a long time now, I've been, I've, I've wrestled a lot of opponents, so yeah, new people is always great as well. Um, you know, getting the opportunity to work with uh, Lacey Fu, what was the things you took away um, getting the, um, you know, chance to work with her? Work with who? Uh, Sorry. Lacey Fury? Lisa. Oh, Lisa Fury. Oh, Sorry. she's yeah, she's a dream. She's yeah. lovely. Uh, yeah, she's she was somebody that um, she probably in about five years before I came into wrestling. Um, massive personality, lovely person to learn from. Again, our styles were really different. She never. She was typically she wouldn't want to take her feet off the floor. She liked doing technical wrestling. Um, so that brought out more technical wrestling that I maybe had not got a chance to do working with people like Klondike Kate, it was more of a um, David and Goliath style match. Um, but then like, I, I would slowly convince her to do a couple of what I would call at the time high flying things, which is probably just you know catching a crossbody or something. But again, great influence on my career, really lovely woman. Um, yeah, really, really, really positive. Uh what are the new set of goals that you have set for yourself that you would like to achieve? Oh, I guess uh, the new new stuff that's around now, like the WWE UK, um, that you know the WWE seems so far away. Being in America before, that much closer. I'd love to work with them more in a extra or a support sort of way. Mm -hmm. Again, like. Um, I feel like there's so many girls just stepping into the industry that are, are maybe more deserving of on their way up. I feel like I've had those like opportunities um, and I've had a really good career out of it. So I just want to enjoy the rest of my career. Mm -hmm. um, I love the promotions that I work for and I really want to put everything I've got into those promotions and they are British promotions. So I want to help the industry that way too. Um, and people have given it a name and it's called the Women's Revolution for some reason. Um, yeah. But what are your thoughts on, um, you know, the women wrestlers who are getting the recognition and getting more of an opportunity from bigger companies out there um, and getting the, the chance that they deserve to perform? Um, what are your thoughts on, on all of that? I think it's brilliant that uh, the people that are on the big stages, the, the women that are on the big stages are getting a chance to perform um, longer matches, uh, more storylines and things like that and I, I hope that continues um, and I think everything from the big companies does have a knock-on effect. I feel like there is a lot of difference from when I first stepped into the industry to what it is now. Um, opportunities for women are increasing. I don't think it's all the way there yet, but I think, you know, the developments that have been made are great and I hope the progress continues um, so that one day every wrestling promotion, you know, has, has uh, women in it and maybe not even in their own divisions, like maybe it would just be wrestlers. 
but yeah, it's great that they've got this um, chance and that we're we're using it wisely. Um, what is next for Erin Angel? Pretty similar to what I said. I just want to help the uh, next generation of wrestlers come through, keep supporting British wrestling, um, take opportunities that I get as well. Um, I go to Europe and, and wrestle in Europe and things. Um, so yeah, just see where it takes me really. Um, is there anything that you would like to say for anyone that's going to watch this episode? Oh, thanks a lot for watching um, and thanks for having me on the show. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time out and giving us an insight of your story. No problem. All right. Thanks guys, I'll catch you on the next episode of Behind the Wrestler.